Hello, I'm Julie Brown and this module is to teach you to use the Anaphylaxis Score Assisting Providers or ASAP. First, a little background. We developed this score to assist providers making treatment decisions for patients with suspected anaphylaxis. This score is designed to help identify which patients with allergic reactions warrant treatment with epinephrine at a particular point in time. It is not intended to be diagnostic criteria for anaphylaxis. Because early treatment with epinephrine improves outcomes, some patients warrant treatment before meeting diagnostic criteria for anaphylaxis. It's important to note that if the patient is clearly in anaphylaxis, give epinephrine first and do not wait to score the patient. This score should be used to aid in determining the need for epinephrine for patients where the diagnosis of anaphylaxis is suspected but uncertain and the need for epinephrine is uncertain. It can also be used to obtain a score, sometimes retroactively after treatment is initiated, in order to track symptom severity over time. This is an overview of the score and its interpretation. You can see the score elements on the left and the interpretation on the right, and we're going to look at each part of this in more detail. The elements you can see are epinephrine use, skin and mucosa, respiratory, cardiovascular, abdominal and pelvic, neurological, and risk factors. In order to fully understand the application of the score, we're going to look at a case and then apply the case to the score. So here is our young man. He's a 10-month-old who arrives at your emergency department at 10 in the morning after eating a cube of cheese at 9 in the morning he had not eaten cheese before. He had no runny nose, no cough, no drooling, no trouble breathing. He vomited once at 9.20. He has not vomited since, and there have been no attempts to feed him since. He has been awake and alert. He is fussy, but he can be consoled, and he was not fussy beforehand. He has no history of allergies. On exam, his vitals are as shown here in the normal range for his age. He has a rash and facial swelling as shown. There is no other rash or swelling on other parts of his body. His mouth and throat appear normal. His lungs are clear with no strider or wheezing. He is awake and well perfused. Capillary refill is less than two seconds. His abdomen is soft and seems non-tender. He is fussy, but he can be consoled. So applying the score, the first element is epinephrine use. And by history and um, by our care to date, he's had no epinephrine use in the past hour. You'll note that he does not get any score for whether or not he's had epinephrine use. We include this element for a couple of reasons. The first is that some of the other elements of the score take into consideration whether or not epinephrine has been given, and so it helps us to have this in mind as we complete the other elements of the score. It is also helpful as a research and tracking tool to know whether or not epinephrine has been given at the time that the score was applied, so we include it for that reason as well. Skin and mucosa, he clearly had uh, both hives and angioedema on his face and upper body, as you saw. So looking at our score elements, he meets more than the mild criteria, which would be less than three hives, or it would be some um, rash or uh, edema that had resolved after an antihistamine, which is not his story. Looking at the moderate criteria, if you look at the last part of those criteria, that seems to fit him quite well, face or lip edema, angioedema, or red eyes. Um, but we'll look at the severe elements as well, just to make sure he doesn't meet criteria there. That would include rapid, i.e. within the past hour, whole body flushing erythema or hives, or tongue or intraoral edema. That seems to be more than what our patient has. So we are going to give him a 2 in the skin and mucosa category. 
In the respiratory category, we said that he had no symptoms prior to arrival, and he had no signs on arrival. He had no congestion, runny nose, cough, trouble breathing, stridor, or wheezing. So he gets a zero in this category. In the cardiovascular category, he had a normal pulse and no hypotension, and he didn't have any symptoms prior to arrival um, or on arrival, such as pallor or listlessness, which would make us think he was having cardiovascular issues. So again, he gets a zero in this category as well. In the abdominal and pelvic category, he did have vomiting once, and it was within the past hour. Remember that he vomited at 9.20, and he's presenting at 10 o'clock. Um, he didn't vomit more than three times, which he would need to meet the, the severe category. So he's going to fall in the moderate category, and he gets two points there. In the neurological category, we describe him as fussy and can be consoled, but he wasn't fussy beforehand. Now, it's very difficult with infants to know exactly how they're feeling. Are they feeling anxious? Are they feeling a sense of impending doom? So we're going to err on the side of being inclusive of their symptoms because we want to err on the side of giving rather than not giving epinephrine in the case of potential anaphylaxis. So I'm going to give him a point for his symptoms of fussiness there. And then risk factors, he did have a rapid onset of symptoms after a food exposure with uh, the development of rash within an hour, and he also vomited 20 minutes after that exposure. So we are going to give him two points for a high-risk exposure. So putting that all together, he gets two, zero, zero, two, one, two, or a total of seven points. And then looking at the interpretation of our score, we, it is dichotomized into a score below five or a score of five and above. So the score of one to four is interpreted as acute anaphylaxis may still be developing. Routine use of epinephrine is not indicated, but may be appropriate if symptoms are recent and progressing rapidly, or if indicated per the patient's anaphylaxis action plan. Place on monitors, observe closely in an environment with staff trained to monitor and treat anaphylaxis and prepare to treat if needed. And for, a patient, and for a score of five or higher, acute anaphylaxis is very likely or risk of progression to anaphylaxis is very high. In the appropriate clinical context, which this certainly is, epinephrine is indicated. So we are going to give our patient epinephrine at this point. Now we note that this score is only a guide. Uh, we certainly are never going to be able to develop a tool that works for the entire universe of patients. The decision to give epinephrine is a clinical decision that may vary by pa patient. However, epinephrine is the only first-line medication in anaphylaxis, and epinephrine is a safe medication, and you should not hesitate to use it when clinically warranted, and we provide some of the safety information about epinephrine there. The ASAP can be used on arrival, and it can be used at any time that the patient's status changed. Um, it can be repeated hourly during a monitoring period to make sure that you're not missing some changes over time. A few specific tips. It is really important to remember that you are scoring only current symptoms and signs unless specifically instructed otherwise, such as the vomiting where it instructs you to score symptoms within the past hour. You should include vomiting of medications as vomiting because, again, we want to be inclusive of symptoms whenever um, we're trying to decide whether or not uh, a symptom should count. We would rather be uh, include them than not include them uh, because we want to err on the side of giving epi. And, key, and just a reminder that if epinephrine has been given, we're going to only score vomiting and diarrhea after it is given because we don't want to be counting things that may already have been appropriately treated with epinephrine. Now we're going to look at this case again, and the only thing that has changed um, in the story this time is that more time has passed between the 
onset, the exposure and the onset of symptoms and the patient's arrival to your emergency department. So it's the same child, but this time he arrives at 11 in the morning. He still ate the cube of cheese at 9. He still vomited at 9.20. He still had the onset of rash within the first hour. The rash looks uh, the same when he presents to you at 11. He was still fussy for about the same amount of time, but now that another hour has passed, he's actually got better and he now seems fine. His exam is pretty much the same. There's still the same rash and um, edema on his face, but except that now he is happy and playful. So applying our score to this same child at this different point in time, still he's had no epinephrine in the past hour. Still he gets two points for his uh, facial angioedema. He still has no respiratory signs or symptoms, so he gets zero points. He still has no cardiovascular symptoms, so he gets zero points. Now here's a difference. Now he has not had vomiting in the past hour because his vomiting was at 9.20 and you're seeing him at 11 o'clock. And as far as he know, as you know, he doesn't have any nausea. He doesn't seem to have any abdominal pain on exam. So he actually doesn't meet even mild criteria. So he's now going to get zero points in the abdominal category. And in the neurological category, now he's no longer acting fussy. So now we are going to again give him zero points for no signs or symptoms in the neurological category. For risk factors, he has the same risk factors as before. That hasn't changed. Even though more time has passed, his onset was still rapid relative to his exposure. So he still gets two points for risk factors. So putting this together, he gets 200002, or a total score of 4. And interpreting that score, in his case, the routine use of epinephrine is not indicated. Although you're still going to put him on monitors, you may give him other appropriate treatments for his rash, such as an antihistamine and an H2 blocker, um, and then see how he does over time. So here's our lovely young man, appropriately treated, in both of these cases. So how could that be that in one case he got epinephrine and in another case he didn't for the same reaction? Well, I hope that you can see um, from these examples how much time matters in the management of anaphylaxis. If you're seeing a patient very early on after an exposure with very recent symptoms, you don't have a crystal ball to know how those symptoms are going to progress and the appropriate treatment is epinephrine. However, if you're seeing a patient after time has passed and those symptoms have not continued or have resolved, then the use of epinephrine may no longer be appropriate. So the same patient with the same exposure and the same symptoms may warrant different management depending on where they are seen in time. And that is really the strength of this scoring tool um, that is geared to helping providers on the front lines who are making treatment decisions about the need for epinephrine rather than trying to make strict diagnostic decisions about whether or not this meets criteria for anaphylaxis. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, this helps you understand our tool and how it might be of use to you in the care of your patients presenting with allergic reactions.